In this video, let's explore what are the different clocks available in the STM32F4 based microcontroller. These clocks are also available across various other MCUs from different vendor. These are the different clock sources available in the typical microcontroller. High speed internal RC oscillator. High speed external oscillator. Phase lock loop. Low speed internal clock and low speed external clock. Remember that each clock can be turned on or off as required. Turning off the unused clock reduces the power consumption of the microcontroller. Out of these clocks, uh, the first three are high speed clock sources and these two are low speed clock sources. Internal signifies that this clock source is internal to the MCU and external signifies that you have to connect the clock source externally to the MCU pins. Now let's study these clocks one by one. When you reset the microcontroller, by default high speed internal oscillator will be used to provide the clock to the microcontroller. That means by default the MCU selects HSI as the system clock that is high speed internal oscillator. This clock is internal to the MCU and its value is 16 megahertz in STM32 F4XX based microcontroller. So by default the MCU system clock is selected as uh, 16 megahertz. So as per this diagram, when HSI is selected as system clock, then system clock will be 16 megahertz. The HSI RC oscillator, which is inside to the microcontroller, has the advantage of providing clock source at low cost because there is no external components really required to use this clock. It also has a faster startup time than the external crystal oscillator. However, the frequency is less accurate than an external crystal oscillator. Selection of system clock is very important because by using system clock, all the other clocks are derived like H clock, P clock, etc. As you can see here, HB clock is derived from sys clock by using this prescalar value. The HB clock, which is also called H clock, cannot exceed 168 MHz. Hence, there is a prescalar to control the H clock. So, all the peripherals which are connected to HB bus will be powered by this clock. That's the reason the peripherals which are connected to this bus will be called as high-speed peripherals. If you remember, the, our GPIO ports are connected to HB1 bus. That means GPIOs are high speed peripherals. Apart from that, there are two peripheral buses. One is called APB1 and another one is APB2. These are slow as compared to HB bus in terms of operating frequency. That's why all the peripherals which are connected to APB1 bus and APB2 bus are called slow peripherals. The APB1 and APB2 clocks are also derived from the system clock using these prescalar in between. In STM32F4 microcontroller, the maximum frequency of the APB1 bus should not exceed 84 MHz and maximum clock frequency of the APB2 bus should not exceed 42 MHz. That's the reason there are prescalar in between to bring down the system core clock to permissible value. As you can see, all these peripherals are connected to APB1 bus and all these uh, peripherals are connected to APB2 bus. This diagram we have explored many times during our course. Now, there are some peripherals like USB OTG, 
uh, the random number generator hardware, uh, the SDIO interface, which stands for Secure Digital Input and Output. Uh, these peripherals are actually, they are not clocked by the system clock. Instead, they get clocked from the PLL directly when the PLL circuit is enabled. You can enable the different clock sources by using RCC configuration registers and uh, you can configure them as system clock, which we will see in later lectures how to do it. Now let's move ahead. If you want to use HSE as system clock, you have to connect an external crystal oscillator whose frequency must be between 4 to 28 megahertz. In the discovery board, uh, the manufacturer has connected 8 megahertz of external crystal to the MCU. In the case of STM32F411RE nuclear board, there also the manufacturer has connected 8 megahertz of external clock. So in order to determine what is the external crystal uh, which is connected to your microcontroller, you have to refer to the user manual of your board. Not the reference manual of the microcontroller, but you have to refer to the user manual of the board given by the board manufacturer because it depends on the board designers. The microcontroller only restrict connecting crystal in the range of 4 to 26. So, so the board designers can uh, use uh, any value in this range. Once you connect the external crystal, then it will not be used as a system clock, remember. Because MCU uses HSI as the system clock by default. So you have to configure the RCC register to make HSE as the system clock. This we will explore in later videos with some uh, coding. Now there is another way to produce the clock that is using circuitry called phase lock loop. By using phase lock loop you can produce different clock frequencies and if you use it as system clock then you should be able to reach uh, maximum of 168 megahertz of H clock along with maximum APB bus frequencies. So if you want to use these bus frequencies at their fullest speed, then forget about using HSI or H HSE as the system clock. You have to take the help of PLL. For the PLL, you have to input either HSI or HSE. Then by using all these settings, it produces the PLL output frequency, which is couple of hundred megahertz, which can be used as system clock to run the MCU. So to run the MCU at its fullest speed in STM32F407X microcontroller, it is 168 megahertz, you have to use PLL. I have a dedicated lecture to derive all these uh, settings to generate the maximum uh, system clock frequency by using PLL. In the later videos, I will explain how to derive all these settings to generate the desired PLL clock. Now, in the next lecture, let's explore how to run the microcontroller using the external crystal oscillator.